We're going to look at the textbook translation exercises from Fuller and Choi, Chapter 6. These are on page 28 under Roman numeral number 3, and we'll look at the translation exercises that are under number 4. And there's eight of them. We'll begin with number 1. I'm going to go ahead and read that. Starting from the right-hand side, moving left. Deber Avraham Davar. Very simple sentence. So we begin with the verb, deber. And we'll, I've noted over here that this is a perfect tense, third masculine singular, and it means he spoke. All the verbs that we are going to encounter for at least a little while will be third masculine singular and perfect tense. If you've had Greek, the Hebrew perfect has a little bit of overlap with the Greek perfect, but they're mostly different. And the Hebrew imperfect is quite different than the Greek imperfect. So you'll have to forget your Greek categories for some of the tenses in Hebrew. What we will see for the foreseeable future are perfect tense verbs, and for a while we'll only see third masculine singular. And so we have deber, that's our verb, and then Avraham, that's our subject, and that's just Abraham, so it's a proper noun, and then davar. Davar is operating as our direct object, and so I'll just call it the object here, the object of the verb. For convenience, sometimes it's easier just to say object of verb rather than direct object. And this is the normal order in a Hebrew sentence. Now the order can vary, but this is a default order, which is verb first, subject, object. And so we have deber, avraham, davar, and here we have an explicit subject. So we have the verb deber, and that would be he spoke. Note that for verbs that we call finite verbs, including perfects and imperfects, a pronoun subject is built into the verb. We'll talk about types of verbs, finite and infinite, or infinite, in great detail later. For a third masculine singular finite verb, such as a perfect, the pronoun that is built in is he. For a finite first person singular verb, the built in pronoun is I. And for first person plural, the built in pronoun is we, etc. For third person verbs, we can also have an explicit subject. In this sentence, it is Abraham. When we do have an explicit subject, then it replaces the built-in subject. Thus, we do not say, Abraham, he spoke. We say, Abraham spoke. So subject and verb are, Abraham spoke. Abraham spoke, davar, a word. Now, we'll learn next chapter that when there's a definite article, it attaches directly to a word at the beginning, and there is no definite article here, and so we just say a word. Abraham spoke a word. That takes care of number one. Notice here that the verb and the noun both come from the root dalit bait resh, and that's very common in Hebrew that we'll see a verb and a noun coming from the same root. We have the verb to speak. We have a noun word. This is something that we will see often in Hebrew, related nouns and verbs that come from the same root. At the end of this example, we see this double diamond sign called a sof pasuk. This is used in the Hebrew Bible to indicate the end of a verse. And then we have a little vertical stroke here called a saluk. It looks a lot like a meteg. In fact, it's identical to a meteg. But when it appears in the final word before a sof pasuk, it indicates the tone syllable of that last word. So even though it looks like a meteg, it's called a saluk and it's used differently than a meteg. So let's move on to number two. We have ko amar Moshe el acharon. Ko Amar Moshe El Acharon. 
So we learn from our vocabulary that ko means thus. Amar is our verb. Again, it's a third masculine singular, perfect. And we're looking for a possible explicit subject. And we have Moshe. Here's Moses. So this is our explicit subject. So Amar would be he said. And then we have Moses. And so we don't need the he in this case. Moses said, El Aharon. Normally said, the verb to say, takes a direct object in the form of something that is said. So he said, pick up the stick or whatever might be said. And that serves as the direct object of the verb said. In this case, there is no direct object. And so we just have, thus said Moses, El Aharon. And here we have a preposition, El, to, and proper name, Aaron, the object of the preposition. So there's no direct object of the verb. The verb has no object. It's just, thus said Moses, or thus Moses said, and then to Aaron. So that's number two. Thus Moses said to Aaron. Number three, bring it up here. We have Ba Navi El Yerushalayim. Ba Navi El Yerushalayim. Ba, as we learn in our vocabulary, is a third masculine singular perfect. We use PF for perfect. And normally our roots have three letters. And in fact, this comes from a root that has three letters, Beit, Vav, Aleph. We won't cover these kind of verbs in detail until next semester. But in the third masculine singular perfect, the Vav drops out. And so we get Ba as the third masculine singular perfect of the verb bo, which means to come. And so this would be, he came. And then here's our explicit subject. It's masculine singular. Every subject we've had so far has been masculine singular. So we had Moshe in number two, Avraham in number one. As we'll learn, a subject always matches its verb in both gender so masculine in this case, and number, in this case, singular. So we have masculine singular noun and a masculine singular verb. So those have to match. So we've seen that so far for all our examples. Now V here is prophet, and we would say a prophet. Again, there's no definite article. El Yerushalayim. Now in this case, the word the verb to come, we don't expect a direct object. In English, we don't have a direct object either. It's just somebody came. There's no object for that verb. So we're not expecting one here. A prophet came, El Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem. Note here that normally the word Yerushalayim has a patach under the Lamed. And this is a case where the vowel has been lengthened to a comet. This often happens in the tone syllable in the final word of a sentence or phrase, typically when there's a sof pasuk or another accent that indicates that a break is happening in the text. This lengthening is called a pausal form. And to the listener, it's a signal that we've reached a point in the text where there is some kind of a pause, similar to a comma or a period or a semicolon, something like that. So it's not a big deal at the moment, but just be aware that sometimes a vowel can lengthen if it's in the final part of a phrase. OK, let's move on to number four. Number four is read Ra'a Adam Shamayim. Ra'a Adam Shamayim. So Ra'a in our vocabulary is a perfect 
third masculine singular verb, and it means to see. And again here we have an explicit subject, Adam, which could be either a man, there's no definite article, or it could be the proper name Adam. Either one, context would tell us. So it could be either uh, Adam saw or a man saw, either way. Shemayim, and this could either be heavens or heaven. Shemayim can be either one, context will tell us that also. So a man saw heaven or Adam saw heaven or heavens. Probably without the definite article, we would just say heaven. Note here that normally Shemayim has a patach, but again, we see it's at the end of a phrase. There's a sof pasuk, and so we have Shemayim with the lengthened vowel because it's in pause. So that's the pausal form. Normally, Shemayim has a patach under the maim. Here we have a comets. Okay, that's our pausal form. Let's move on to number five. Again, we're on page 28, and we're looking at the translation exercises at the bottom of the page. So here we have Lakach Kohen Evid Min Mitzrayim. Lakach Kohen Evid Min Mitzrayim. So Lakach, again, it's perfect third masculine singular. It's the only form that we've seen so far. It means to take. So this would be, he took, and here's our explicit subject, Kohen, and there's no definite article, so it would be a priest, took, Evid. Notice the accent on the first syllable, Evid, and that is a servant. So here we have our verb, our subject and our direct object, the object of the verb. A priest took a servant, min, from Mitzrayim, from Egypt. Mitzrayim is the name of the country, Egypt. And again, we have a pausal here. This is normally a patak, and it's been lengthened to a comets because it falls at the end of a verse. And so it's the last word before this sof pasuk. Okay, so Lakach uh, Kohen Evid Min Mitzrayim. A priest took a servant from Egypt. Okay, number six. Halach Moshe Im Acharon. Halach Moshe Im Acharon. We've seen some of these words already. We've seen Moses, we've seen Aaron. We have halak, again, perfect, third masculine singular, to go, to walk, and we have an explicit subject here, Moses. So again, we have verb, subject. Normally the word to go or to walk doesn't have a direct object. So we're not expecting a direct object, and sure enough, all we see after this is a preposition. Moses walked, or Moses went, im acharon, with Aaron. This is our preposition, with, im, im acharon. So, Moses walked with Aaron. Number seven, yatsa min ir, yatsa min ir. Here's a case where we do not have an explicit subject. We have the verb yatsa, again, perfect, third masculine singular, it means to go out, to exit. And so we say he went out, but in this case, there is no explicit subject. So we need he as the subject of our sentence. He went out, min, ear, from a city. Without an explicit subject, we supply the pronoun that goes along with third masculine singular, which would be he. He went out from a city. Yatsa min ir. And finally, number eight, ba el Yisrael. Ba el Yisrael. 
We saw ba earlier up here in number three. So we've seen that verb already. And so we see ba. This again is he came, he entered, and like number seven, there's no explicit subject. We have a preposition immediately following the verb, so we need our he again. This is a perfect third masculine singular, and so we need that third masculine singular pronoun, he, to make our sentence. He came el Yisrael, to Israel. He came to Israel. That's number eight.